Hello and welcome to this video for ElectroPages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. Today, we're gonna to be talking to Tim from Deepex to see some pretty cool video stuff. So, I'd like to say thank you ever so much for inviting us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, for the sake of the audience, just tell them who you are and what you do. Uh, so, we are AI chip innovator in the world, and we are making fabulous AI chip, which has very ultra low power than the others, and we are targeting on device AI which is actually help everybody like convenient. Fantastic. So, could you just tell us what's going on on this screen right now? Because I see some hardware and it looks quite interesting, but it's also completely no symbols, no nothing. So we don't know what's <laughs> going on. So tell us what's going on. So like, so we are working close with like many hardware companies. So they want to run so many things on device. Yeah. And one of our partners in Ventec, so they're one of the biggest like OEM company. So they already developed the gateway with the Intel, but it doesn't have enough computing power. Right. So they plug in our AI accelerator, and as ah. you can see, this that, that, that's this here, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Okay, I see. Oh, so it's actually like an NVMe kind of style yes. uh, M2 key slot. Exactly. Oh, so that's over P PCI, isn't it? Yes. Right. And PCI that, Gen 3. Oh, okay, so then that gives you that AI acceleration in a generic machine. Yes. Which means I could even put it. Oh, okay. It can go to any kind of single board computer. Oh, because it doesn't have AI computing power. Because you can plug in. Because the Raspberry Pi is just also included the yes. hat now for it. So that's yes. very exciting yes. as well. Ah. So as you can see, like even the DBAS can support up to Fusion language model, which is very big. But we are running that big model on on device. So right, so so right now, right now, what is it actually doing in terms of processing? What's so, it? In the beginning, like AI is all about detecting the object. Yes. But right now, AI can understand the scene. So that's how it should actually we do the real-time demo. And so this is one of those things where it's like, so, so in the past, you can recognize a face or you can recognize a person, but now you're saying, this is a person's face and he's angry. Yes. Oh, okay. So, so once you actually encode it, all like situation you want to analyze, mm. then it actually gives you the signal. Once AI can see that scene, you want to signal. Right, so two videos that have just have just caught my eye. We've got the one with the fire coming out of the car, and then we've got the one with the uh, over uh, the overloaded socket. And fire is an interesting one because trying to detect fire can actually be quite difficult. Yes. And, but but the human eye would obviously know that something's on fire. Exactly. And so this is where your solution comes in and goes, actually, we can sort of pick things up before that even like a fire sensor is detected what's yes. going on. So is this something that we're seeing real world implementations already? This exactly. thing is already out there. Yes. And so what would you say is like what would you say is the, I'd say, the most interesting uh, use case for this? What, oh. what are you most interested in? So we are working with many big companies, which is like telecommunication company. So they want to make like smart city, so make the city safe. Yeah, of course. So there are so many like CCTVs around like their city, yeah. but they want to detect certain like accident events. Like the violent one? Yes, here. violent and so many crowded people. And, and, and the this, fire. And this goes back to what you said, like a, a typical AI would look at that and go, oh look, there are people's faces. Yes. But what you wanted to say is, that person's face is being kicked by another person. <laughs> and so it's kind of like, that's, that context is what matters. Yes. Mm. But like, we also keep the privacy. So mm. the, all the video data doesn't go to the cloud. It and actually analyzes everything on the device. And that's what I was going to ask you, because I can imagine some people get a bit nervous about the idea of yes. cloud-based AI. Yes. I mean, it's powerful, but you know, the data has to be transmitted, it has to be stored, and all, but, but, so what you're doing is essentially moving it to the edge, move it onto your incredibly tiny little PCIe device, and then by doing that, the data doesn't leave the machine, stays on the machine, but then you can infer the situation. Exactly. Fantastic. And again, it's like, it's like these, it, again, this is the kind of thing which I'd love to see about AI, where instead of just being, you know, like the face, you can say that person's fallen over, he's collapsed, something's happened. Yes. And but so the police cannot be like 24 7 available. Exactly. So, like, yeah. if the AI can actually understand the scene, then we can actually send those like people to the appropriate scene. Exactly. And it, it almost makes like these things almost like a neighborhood watch. It's yeah. like it's like having your neighbors watching out for yeah. you. So they're not gonna they're not gonna take pictures of you, put it in a cloud service thing, but what they yes. are gonna do is, oh, I've seen you fall over. So oh, think cool. about it, how many people we can save. 
Exactly, exactly. And, and again, and actually, I, uh, and I know, I know it's a sensitive topic, but the terrorism was quite interesting as well because yeah. those situations are fast paced, they happen really quickly, it's hard to send in someone fast enough to stop mass loss, a, a massive loss of life. Yeah. So imagine one of these things sitting in an airport somewhere, yeah. the moment someone pulls out a firearm, firearm. Yeah. Police immediately, and it's within two seconds. Yes, someone's got an alarm before they've even pulled the trigger. And by the within time, milliseconds, within milliseconds. Yes, and, and that's where you and, and that's why you need your on-device acceleration. Exactly. So if we move over here, I, I can, I've just seen something that made me laugh about five minutes ago, which is what appears to be butter melting on a CPU. So let's move over to there. Sure. And let's have a look at what's going on. So. When it comes back up, we saw a, a video of butter being melted on a processor. Tell us what was going on there. Uh, so, like, we want to just emphasize how ultra low power DBX has, and like, our CEO actually came up with the idea that let's put the butter on our chip to show that how ultra low power DBX can run the AI model on device. So that's like experiment we actually conducted, and those are like comparison between like Justin Orin and Nvidia platform. Yeah. So we are much like cost saving and less power. So it's perfectly fit to embedded systems. Hmm. Now, I just saw, a, uh, I just saw something, it's, I think it said 20 times less power, but 20 times more processing power. But yeah, which, 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 oh, here you go, here's the butter scene. Yes. Right, so this, you're demonstrating here how your uh, solution is, uh, was it 30, yeah, 35.5 degrees compared yes. to the 60 for whatever the company's yes. processor was. Yes. Um, so something I wanted to mention about that processing power, um, it, it's interesting, it, it is an interesting problem for AI because um, and I, I, I'm seeing news reports of, of companies like Microsoft or whatever, and Google, they actually want to buy nuclear power stations yeah. just to run their data centers. That's, that's crazy. Which is insane. But then you have something like this and you're able to squeeze that performance while reducing the power. So how, how, is, how are you achieving that? How, what, what kind of techniques do you, uh, what, what you, that you can tell us that you're using? Well, uh, in broad concept, yeah. we will say like, we know how to co-optimize between software and hardware. Yeah. So we know how to make the AI model small without losing accuracy and running on our chip efficiently. So that is key. And, and, that, and you, you mentioned about uh, re, uh, improving the efficiency by reducing the model size. That's where you've got your uh, uh, integer eights versus your floating point thirty. Yes. I've seen this before, and you, you try to reduce as much as you can. So, and, and, and so you're proving. So does that mean that you're offering software to help engineers reduce the size of the models? Yes. So it's ah. automatic. So automatic. For example, like there are so many our customer, mm -hmm. they are suffering from making models smaller yeah. to a certain chip they want to use because of price. But we shorten their development time with our SDK. They just port their model without contagion or making models smaller. And we do it by, by automatically with our SDK. That's like one of our key solutions we can deliver to our customers. And so you're not just offering hardware, you're also offering software, which, which, is, which is probably one of the most important things I would yes. say, because as any engineer who knows, Hardware's half the problem, you know. That's true. And, and if someone said to me, oh, here's a great device that can make AI really fast, much faster, but you've got to figure out how to do the software. You think, yes. oh, okay, yes. here we go now. But instead, you're offering that to the engineers. So how does that work? Is that like an IDE or a library or what kind of software interface? How, how does that interface work in terms of like taking a model and then reducing its size and then implementing it? So like uh, our SDK has like, so there are like three different parts. So yeah. first is quantization. Automatically, we actually right. help you yeah. to make your, your model smaller. Yeah. And we optimize that model to run beautifully on our SDK. Yeah. And also, we're going to provide certain API related to the application. Oh, excellent. So that is three <laughs> part we support. And we help our end customer to deliver mm. the turnkey solution they want. Now, now I'm going to be a bit ignorant here, because I've, I've had limited experience with AI. The, the, the AI models I work with are things like the Llama 3, large language models. Uh, and, and, and in terms of running that, the way I run those is on a, an NVIDIA GPU, for example, using CUDA models. Is, is that how yours works? Or how does the model work in terms of, to start again, how would that compare to like a, like a, a typical model? Like, like is there, is it, what kind of file format is it? Or what kind of uh, uh, sort of like, I don't know how to describe it. What, what, what's the engine? I, I, I'm not sure what you describe it. Um, hang on a minute. Is it like a tense? Uh, let's, let's do that one more time. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, <laughs> so my brain's gone. Yeah. I'm trying to ask. 
I guess like that part you can talk with like Mr. Kim. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out like it's it's not a CUDA model because CUDA engines is run on Nvidia. So what is it? <laughs> that makes sense. Is it? Uh... So we actually come up with like our software engine to make the end user to develop their AI model much yeah. easier. Yeah. And so we can actually provide same as CUDA, mm. but once they actually develop their model yeah. from scratch based on TensorFlow, PyTorch. Yeah. And Onyx, and oh, we support right them. now. That's that. Here we go. So this is so so engineers can use PyTorch and those kind of like okay, that's great. Because yeah. my biggest my biggest worry would be like oh, you have to use something quite proprietary. That's a bit difficult to use. Yeah. Okay, so you can take your PyTorch models, it get, creates your vectors, and, and then you can just turn that straight into a model, which then yours will oh, exactly. That's excellent. Yeah. That's absolutely excellent. Yeah. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. So yeah. basically, yeah, any model you've currently got, you can transport it, convert it to the DeepX. Um, model and then that's going to run on those devices, exactly. which is fantastic. Yes. So just before we uh, wrap up this video from your side, um, is it just the one processor you guys got, or have you got more coming up? So this is all about like vision application, the first generation, and second generation will be we're going to run small language model up to 13 billion parameter on device. How oh, excellent! Under five watts. That's oh, our target. Watts. But our target Ooh. performance is 25 or 30 token per second, which is enough for each person. So here's here's a question for you then. So let's say that you bring out the next generation and it's and it's good for 130 million parameter large language model. Do you foresee that being used potentially in server racks where you could have a hundred of these chips, all just using five watts, but you can service a hundred individual LLM clients? in parallel. Do you think that's something that might happen? Uh, we are not targeting hyperscale because like, we want to give more personalized services and we believe there is a device which need our chip for each person's services. So that is a different target we actually approach. Ooh, that means, that means, are, are you particularly interested in, in services like Microsoft's Copilot, whereby it's, exactly. going, it's going to need that, it's going to need that AI accelerator, and that's why you've made it PCIe, so you can slot it in, work straight out the box. So you understand like what we are preparing. Uh, now this is making sense, this is yeah. great. But I mean, it is amazing to see that you've got this, this device that can run as low, uh, in terms of low energy as it can, with the performance that it has, but to then make it PCIe, slot straight in, works with PyTorch. It seems to me that you guys are trying to provide an alternative platform to things like NVIDIA, which by the way, I mean, have you tried to get one of their graphics cards? You know, the, the, the supply issues are always a problem. They're always too expensive. They're yes. very power hungry. Unless you're doing massive training data sets, you know, it's, you don't want that in the end application. You yes. want something very low powered, yes. very, very sort of small in size. And honestly, this is, this is absolutely fantastic to see. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. And just like see it like, oh, it's there, right here. Guys, it's right here. There is no chip you can touch in the world, but I, you can touch it. I don't want to touch it. it <laughs> is, it's amazing. Look at that. Actually, there's barely any heat whatsoever on that. But we are running the AI model in I'm, real time. I'm pretty sure the memory chips are warmer than the actual yes. chip itself. That's absolutely insane. Look at that. And this is running, is it running on a Raspberry Pi? Oh, no way. Oh, I totally called it. So you've got yourself, uh, yeah, you've got your PCIe uh, hat on top. You've got your, uh, uh, you've got your uh, AI accelerator on the PCIe, connected to the Raspberry Pi. So all of this is running on the Pi. Yeah. So the whole time we've been standing here, the Pi has been doing this. And I want to show you like another performance, like it's the same Raspberry Pi. Yeah. But our AI accelerator can per perform up to like 700 frames per second. It's full power. Hang on. It's Raspberry Pi. There's a hundred clips. Yes, it's Are 36. They... Oh, sorry, is it two separate ones? It's separate one. Oh yeah, so there's 36 clips here and they're all being rendered at the same time. Yes, on Raspberry Pi with our chip. Well, there's no company who can do it, but we do it. I've got no words. That, that is, honestly, oh, I don't know what to say. 36 clips. So the 700 frames per second would be, if you had like one individual video frame, it would be 700 frames per second. Yes. What would you do with, with that kind of power? So that's our technology. Yeah, but what would you, like, what could, that, that, that would be, 
See, I could, I'm, I'm surprised something like this wouldn't be useful in vehicles. You know, if you're talking about like small sensors scattered around the vehicle, real-time sensing it's in possible. particular key zones and stuff. Honestly, this is incredible. And I, I, I understand why you said no other company in the market has got this. So you guys must be, um, so may, may I ask very quick, how, how old is the company? Is it a really? So we are a six years old company. Yeah. And, and how, long, how, how, how long has this chip been out for? So we're going to do the mass production next year, first yep. quarter. And, and has this been, has, so this has been a six year project? Yes. And when, did it, how, when, when has this been released to the public? Uh, next year, first quarter, will be our mass production. Oh, hang on. And it's last not, year was we are start selling our hot, hot, samples. It's not even available yet? Yeah. As in like, this is, this is like cutting edge for you guys. Yes. It's taking you six years to get here. So you can imagine, oh wow, so this is, and you guys are, I bet you guys are really excited to get this chip out Exactly. There. Honestly, that is absolutely incredible. And all our end customers are also excited about our release. Can I ask how much this chip would be? Or this, 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 this unit in particular? The module itself is $100. $100. That is ridiculous. Oh, I, I, I really can foresee this being the next kind of like add-on car that you have in a PC. Yeah. You've, got your, you've got your SSD, you've got your CPU, whatever, RAM, and then suddenly, AI accelerator. Yeah. And that's going to handle all that. I, honestly, this, I'm going to show you, yeah, this is absolutely fantastic work you guys have done. I am honestly, honestly speechless. This is amazing. So can you just tell me what's going on here, though? Oh, so, so once we actually release our chip and our end customer, they test like our engineering sample in the beginning. And they actually recommend us, I want the PCI card with your chip. That's why we came up uh, with H1 card. Because not every, not every computer has a P, uh, has a uh, M2 slot. Yes. yes. Or you've used the M2 slot for an and, SSD. And some of like our end customer wants more computing power than M, M1, 25 tops. Yeah. They want 100 tops. Yeah. And with such a customer, we actually provide this H1 card. Well, to be, oh, to be completely honest, I actually run my own, uh, I run my own server racks at home, and I'm already thinking, they don't have PC, uh, the, the M2, but they have a few spare yes. of these. I'm thinking, mm, yes. well, that might be useful actually, even in my own application. So this is a really incredible thing. Because like so many companies, they are yeah. trying to use our H1 card for their mm. workstation or on-premise service. Exactly. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. Well, all I can say is thank you ever so much for taking the time to see it. It's been thank an you. absolute pleasure. Thank you ever so much. Thank you.